Hi, what is going on? My name is Anand, and in this video, we're going to talk about setting up Google Workspace for sending cold emails. Now, here you can see I've already pulled up an article which will help you set up a Google Workspace account very quickly. But what's more important than setting up a Google Workspace account is setting up the DNS records the right way. And these DNS records include SPF, DKIM, DMARC, and MX. And you don't have to be scared about these terms because even if you're not a techie, I'm going to teach you how do you set up this whole thing by yourself without needing any developer or a freelancer for yourself right so let's see how do you set up a google workspace account first you will have to go to this link over here where you will have to go give your business details i will also drop the link of you know this page in the description so that you can quickly get started with setting up your google workspace account so for this one i'll keep the business name as Gramchip because uh, that's what I'm going to use as my domain. How many employees? Let's just keep just you. Region, I keep India and let's move to the next thing. So here I need to give them the domain name, right? So I've already bought this domain over here, which is gramchimp.com and I want to set up a Google Workspace account for this domain. So I'm going to paste over here. We'll send user information to Google Workspace app. No thanks. At least not for now. Uh, what is the username that you want to get? So if you're an admin setting up the account, I would suggest you get a you know email called admin at the rate .com. But here's a pro tip. If you think you don't have a really large team, then you can just stick to your own name and you could consider that as your admin account, right? However, in most companies, they prefer to use admin at the .com. and then i am not a robot agree and continue and that's it so now let's just continue to setting up this google workspace account so number one you will have to protect your domain so i'll click over here protect i'm ready to protect my domain I click over here. Let's go to the next step. So this is the TXT value that I'll have to set up. And for that, I'll go here and I'll search for DNS because that's what I want to change. So here's the DNS record. Now here you can see we have a lot of things set up, but all I need to do is to set this value in my dns record and that is really simple all you need to do just look at this it's a txt value that i need to add over here right so i'll just choose txt right i'll go back host record at the rate which means my current domain and the value which is this one right so value i'll paste over here and then i'll have to put this ptl time to live over here and that's it, right? No matter what kind of uh, platform you're using to set up your DNS record, you might be using GoDaddy, you might be using any other, you know, registrar. All of them, they're, they're going to have an interface like this where they let you choose through any of these options A, MX, C name, you know, a lot of other options we have. They let you set up the name, they let you set up the TXT value and the time to live. Right. And all you need to do is just click on add record. That's it. Now, depending on the registrar that you have, it might take some time to reflect. Right. So here, if I go back and I try to validate this, maybe it will happen instantly or maybe it's going to take some time to reflect. Usually it takes 48 hours, but let's just see in this case, is it going to do instantly or it's going to take some time? So I'll click on protect domain. And now here it is trying to verify. Cool. So now, as you can see, it took me less than one or two minutes to verify. But in your case, depending on your domain registrar, it may take up to 48 hours. So do not worry about that. You can, you know, always come back later and check if your domain changes has been reflected or not. So now once you're done with this, you will click on continue. And then the next step is going to create new users, right? It, it means 
if you have a domain you have admin at the gramgym.com now you want to create more email accounts over here so i'm going to click create i'm going to click continue now here i'm going to add one more user and here i can add an alias which means if someone is sending to sending an email to let's say this one it will land on this email ID over here. I can add as many as I want. So I can keep it like Anand, Thought, Gupta, all sort of variation. I can put it over here and then I can save, right? And then I'll have to click on continue. So here I have added my very first uh, email. Now I'll have to activate Gmail so that I can send emails, right? I'm ready to activate my Gmail. So I'll click over here and I'll go to the next step. And now, as you can see, it is trying to teach me how do, you, how do I set up, but I already know all of this. So it has given me these values that I need to set up in my DNS editor, right? And I've just shown you how easy it is. So it is an MX record you need to set up. Priority should be one. This should, this should be the value. So, you know, let's just copy this value because I already know what is the priority. So here I'll keep priority as one. This is the value. And in the name, I'll be using, you know, this one itself, which is at the rate. At the rate represents my current domain, which is gramchim.com, right? So either you can just put at the rate or you can put gramchim.com. That's your choice. Now here it is one hour that we'll have to put. So how, how many seconds do we have in one hour? You can just convert that one hour to seconds. And that is 3600, right? So I'll just put 3600 as seconds, right? And I'll click add record. That's it. Cool. So I have added all of these records. Now I'll go back to my DNS zone editors and I'll click MX. It is going to show me all the MX records that I have, right? So this one is from Google. This one is from Google. Now, since I am using Hostinger, I also have Hostinger MX record. And, and this is important for us to delete any other MX record besides Google, because right now we're going to use Google for receiving all the emails, right? MX, we set up MX to receive emails. That's why we want to delete any other MX record, but don't do it for all kind of you know other records that we have because look we have c name we have a we have txt you know you don't want to mess with these records over here i'm just saying it for mx record because mx is responsible for receiving emails and we don't want any other email provider to receive email besides google right and that is why i have deleted mx record so see we've already set up our mx record now i'll click on activate gmail let's see it will try to validate all of this so let me just pause and i'll get back to you once it, all of them are validated cool so as you can see it is telling me that these records are, are not validated yet it means this these records that i've added as you can see let me just go here and see have i added these records atl ASPMX, whatever it is look at this i've already added this record but what it is telling me that this record has still not been added, right? Okay, I made a mistake here. So I was supposed to add one day and I added one hour, right? And the one day, one day would be, let's just convert one day to seconds. It's going to be this one, right? Instead of, uh, you know, what I was adding earlier. So I'll just go ahead and I'll make the changes. What I need to do is I'll go here, I'll paste this. I'll click update. Okay, so I guess all of them are updated. 86, 400, right? Now let me just try it once again. Retry activation. Now look, I'm still getting this error. Your MX record didn't match. So it means whatever changes that i've made on my dns it has still not been reflected right so i'll have to wait for some time it can go up to 48 hours so you will have to wait for some time to reflect so let me just try once again look at this so now we you know retried and it is now 
finished, right? So I'll have to click on finish. So I'll just go to my admin. So we have successfully set up our Google Workspace account over here, and we've also added our MX record, right? Now, you don't want to forget this important step, which is setting up your SPF record. So just search for that. SPF for Google Workspace, right? We want to set up the SPF record for Google Workspace, which is this one, right? So let me just copy this from here. SPF record, or you can just open it, right? You can open the article and you can copy the SPF. Okay, so I'll go back to my edge panel. Let's just try to search for SPF. Do we have any SPF record? Yes, we do. And we have the SPF record for hosting because we were earlier using Hostinger's email provider. So we want to delete this one. And instead, we want to add now SPF is always a TXT record. Let me just verify this for you. Look at this. It's a TXT record that you need to add, right? Look at this. So TXT, you know, the value at the rate and the time to live that we need to add is 3600 seconds, one hour or 3600 seconds. I'm going to keep 3600 seconds and then add a record, right? That's it. Let's just go back to our admin console and see what we can do with our admin console. All my users. I can manage it from here. So if I click on match, I will get the list of users. I can delete them. I can change their username if I want to. I do a lot of things from here. So look, we have Anand. We have this one. So let me just reset the password for Anand. I'll create a new one and I won't ask him to change the password so that I can try logging in with this email. Okay. So now it is done. So I'll go to this Google sign in. I'll put my email anant at the rate .com. I'll click next and then I'll have to put my password, right? And press next. Let me just try sending my very first email. Look at this. I'm, I'm getting this over here. Anand Gupta. Anand at the rate .com. Hey Anand, right? When you're sending cold emails, it's very important that you have a DP. It will give you a much better CTR, which is click through rate. So how do you do it? If you try to do, do it from, you know, this one, and I'll try to click here, it will not allow you, it won't allow you to change your display picture. And for that, we'll have to make some changes in the admin settings, but cool. So let's see what, what is the change that you will have to make in your admin console. So I'll go back here and then I'll click more options. By the way, I'm here right now. You will have to go to your admin. You will have to go to your directory and you'll have to choose users. Now inside users, you will click on more options and you will allow users to edit their profile picture. So you'll allow them to change their name, photo and gender and you will save, right? And that's the only way you can let anyone change their display picture. Trust me, if you try to do it by yourself over here, if you try to change these images from here, it's not going to work. I have done, I have tried this myself already and it doesn't work that way. So what you'll have to do is to allow them to change their DP by themselves. And then someone can go here. So let me just refresh and they will get the access to change their DP. But Keep this thing in mind. If you're changing your display picture and then you're sending emails, it will take 24 hours to reflect these changes. Let's click over here and let's just see, do we have the option? Yes, we do, right? So I can just click this one. I can choose any illustration or I can choose one DP from my computer. Cool, so I've chosen this one as a reference and then I'll click on understood, right? So all the changes that I've made over here is going to reflect in 48, 24 to 48 hours. So if you'll send email quickly after changing your DP, it's not going to reflect. Just wait for 24 hours and it should work for you. And it's a very cool hack, right? 
uh, in case you want to learn more about these cold email psychology hack, make sure to subscribe to Groomy Organic because I'm going to post more about these things. We have already set up everything, DMARC, DKIM, right? Whatever was needed for us. Now what we want to do is to test because we are a human and we can make mistakes while setting up our DNS records. That's why we want to test it using a tool called mailtester.com. So let's just search for mail tester. I'm going to put this link in the description. Cool. So here you can see we've got this email. I'll copy this one. I'll go back here and I'll put this email as a recipient. Just checking in. Hey, how are you? And let's send the email. Now I'll go back and I'll click then check your score. So as you can see over here, we're getting 8.5 out of 10 as our score, right? Which means, which is a decent score, obviously, right? So let's just see what we have done correctly. So as you can see, uh, this is our message that we sent. This is uh, the DKIM, DMARC, whatever record that we set up over here, which is good, right? We were able to pass the SPF, DKIM, DMARC, all sort of records. Your DKIM signature is valid. DMARC is valid. You know, everything is valid over here. So that's also good. Your message could be improved. Obviously, that was a test email. So, you know, we can have a better email uh, instead of, hey, how are you, right? You have been blacklisted by these three IPs. But since this IP is being managed by Google LLC, you don't have to worry about all of this. They'll take care of this. You know, they'll get rid of all of this. In case it's a SMTP owned by me, which is not the case, right? I'm using Google Workspace as a SMTP. So then it's it's them who's going to look at this issue and fix that. But if you are the one who set up the SMTP and who bought the IPs and stuff, then you will have to go to this company's website and there should be a D-list page, which is this one, test to remove IP, right? So you need to ask them to remove your IP. So if I click over here, this is the IP that I want to remove. I can just copy this one and paste it over here, right? Now it is going to tell us whether it has been blacklisted in this website's directory or not. This IP is currently listed in our database. That can happen because of the shared IP. You don't have a dedicated IP since a lot of other people are also using this IP to send emails. That's why it went to this, uh, you know, blacklist, but you don't have to worry about all of this. Google will take care of, you know, all of this, but here you can ask them to, you know, delist you. All you need to ensure that your domain is not blacklisted. If your domain is not blacklisted, you don't have to worry about all of this since you're using Google workspace and see when we tried sending an email from our email to another Gmail account, it was landing in the primary inbox. That means it is fine. Right. But there's one more thing that you will have to keep in mind, which is warming up your email address. And that's what I'm going to teach you in the next video. What do, what do you mean by warming up? It means sending emails really slow so that you get some amount of reputation. Because when you're just getting started, you have a really new domain. Not a lot of inbox are going to give you some authority to directly land on the primary inbox when you're sending cold emails, right? So in that case, you will have to start slow. You'll have to start sending, let's say 10 emails per day, and then you'll have to slowly increase your daily sending limits. Now there's multiple, multiple ways to do it. You can do it manually. You can do it automatically using a software like Romeo organic, but that's what we'll talk about in the next video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll talk more about the technical and the psychological part of sending cold emails, right? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.